Hello everybody and welcome to video 8 of unit 1. This is our last video lecture of unit 1. We will have one more in-class lecture before um, the end of the unit. But in this video we will be discussing temperature and density. We will convert between the temperature scales, we'll define density, and then we'll also solve some density problems. As you may already know, we use Fahrenheit when we discuss temperature here in the United States. Most other parts of the world we use uh, Celsius, and in the science community we use Kelvin. So there are three different scales of temperature that are out there. We need to be able to take any of those scales and convert it into another. So to convert, we are going to use the equations that are given. First equation given is to convert Fahrenheit from Celsius. Please note the parentheses and where they're located in each of these. If you do not keep your parentheses in place, you will uh, calculate and convert incorrectly. The first one, Fahrenheit, will equal 9 fifths of the temperature in Celsius plus 32. For Celsius, we're going to take 5 ninths of the difference between our Fahrenheit and 32. And then to calculate Kelvin, we need to have our temperature in Celsius, and then we just add 273. Let me note that you do not have to have these memorized for the test. Uh, we, I used to make students memorize them, but now they're on your equation sheet. I believe on your equation sheet you have the Celsius and the Kelvin, but no matter what, if you are asked to determine the Fahrenheit from a Celsius, you should be able to manipulate that equation and solve for the Fahrenheit. One thing to note, when we're dealing with temperatures and because we're doing multiplication and division and subtraction, it's going to be easier for us uh, when we are reporting temperatures just to keep the same number of decimal places in the original temperature um, as our answer. So in other words, in our answer we'll, we will record as many decimal places as the original temperature has. That's just what rule we're going to use in our class when reporting temperatures. Let's do an example of converting. Here we have a Fahrenheit temperature of 39 degrees and we want to convert all the way to Kelvin. Well, we do not have an equation that goes directly from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, so this is going to be a two-part problem. The first thing we're going to do is look at our equation sheet and we're going to find that our, our equation for converting to Celsius is going to be 5 over 9 The temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. Remember where your parentheses are. Those are important to the orders of operation. So we're going to take our 5 ninths and multiply it to the difference of 39 minus 32. Enter this into your calculator and you will get 3.8 Eight, 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 eight degrees Celsius. But remember, we want to keep the same number of decimal places as our original number. So our original number 39 didn't have any decimal places. So we are going to cut our number off here at the ones place, round it up. So we're going to be using four degrees Celsius in our next equation. So we've got Celsius. Now we need to go to Kelvin. So Kelvin will equal our degree C plus 273. So we're going to take 4 plus 273. And we are going to get 277K. Now note there is no degree sign on Kelvin. It's important for you to um, not use a degree sign. We will use it for Fahrenheit and Celsius, but not with Kelvin. So this is our final answer. No decimal places in our final answer because there were no decimal places in our original temperature. The next thing we're going to discuss is density. Density is a ratio of mass to volume. The formula for density is D equals M over V. 
and m is the mass of an object. This will be in grams. V is the volume. And this will be in either milliliters or cubic centimeters. And D is our density. And density will have a unit of grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. It's one thing to remember that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. They are equivalent. In the next few slides, we are going to use the density formula to solve for some missing um, masses and volumes and even calculate the density of some substances based on the mass and the volume. All right, here's our density formula, mass divided by volume. Our problem here is what is the density of aluminum if its mass is 8.4 grams and its volume is 3.1 centimeters cubed. We will be doing a lot of word problems in chemistry, so it's important that you kind of get yourself used to a certain process when solving word problems. The first thing you should do is write down what your problem is giving you. So in this problem, it is telling you that your mass, your M, equals 8.4 grams. It is also telling you that your V will equal 3.1 cubic centimeters. Include your number in your unit because they're measurements, remember. You also should write down what you are looking for. So we are looking for density. Density is unknown. Once you have your givens, and once you have what you're looking for, you can look at your equation sheet and see if there is an equation that allows you to use those givens to find uh, the missing variable. So here I've already provided it density equals mass divided by volume. So we're going to say D equals M over V. We're going to plug in our numbers, 8.4 grams, leave your units in, divided by 3.1 centimeters cubed. Place this in your calculator, and your calculator gives you 2.70967742. And this will be grams per cubic centimeter. However, these are measurements. We need to make sure we take into account significant figures. To do significant figures with density, we are dividing. Therefore, we need to look at the lowest number of sig figs in each of the me measurements. Our first measurement has two. Our second measurement has two. Our final answer must only have two. So we're going to count one, two, that zero will not do anything to the seven. So our answer is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Take a moment and try this problem on your own. What is the density of a block of marble that occupies 310 milliliters and has a mass of 853 grams? Go through, write down your givens, Write down what you're asked to find, fill in your formula, solve with your calculator, and then make sure you report your answer with the correct number of sig figs. So pause the video now, write down the problem, and try it on your own. Did you get an answer of 2.8 grams per milliliter? If you did, then you did a great job working out the problem. If you didn't, pause the video, go back and try it again and see what might have gone wrong in either your calculations, sometimes it's a simple calculator error, or maybe it was your sig figs, maybe you didn't calculate sig figs right. So go back and try it if you didn't get 2.8 grams per milliliter. All right, let's do another one. What is the volume of an unknown substance if its density is 4.23 grams per milliliter and its mass is 3 point one grams. Write down what you know. Well, you know your density is 4.23 grams per milliliter. 
You also know that its mass equals 3.1 grams, and we're looking for volume. What does volume equal? If you notice our density equation, we do not have an equation that solves for volume, but can we get one? Of course we can. We can take density equals mass divided by volume. We want to solve for volume. To get volume by itself, we're going to multiply each side by V. Doing that cancels the volume over here. Now we have V times D equals mass. We don't want mass by itself, we want V by itself. So whenever you're multiplying something on one side, to get rid of it, we divide both sides by that value or that variable. So dividing both sides by D, we get rid of density. Now we have our new formula equals volume equaling mass divided by density. I can tell you that one of the biggest problems that students have is rearranging formulas to solve for the missing variable. So if you have difficulty with that, make sure you practice, make sure you write it out like I have here every time until you get the, a better hand, uh, hang of it. So now that we have this, we can plug in our values, 3.1 grams divided by 4.23 grams per milliliter. Our grams will cancel, leaving milliliters. Now check yourself. Milliliters, is that a appropriate unit for volume? Of course it is, so we must have set up our problem correctly. Now using our calculator, we are going to plug in 3.1 divided by 4.23, and our calculator will give us an answer of 0.73286 milliliters. But that's not a correctly accurate answer because we're not taking into account sig figs. Looking at our mass, we have 2. Looking at our density, we have 3. So again, we're going to end this number at 2, 1, 2. This 2 will not round up the 3. So our accurate answer is 0.73 milliliters is our volume of this unknown substance. Okay, the final problem we're going to do together um, is what is the mass of a volcanic rock if its density is 1.2 grams per milliliter and it occupies 75 milliliters? Write down your known density equals 1.2 grams per milliliter. Its volume is 75 milliliters. And we're looking for mass. What's mass equal? Again, our equation is density equals mass divided by volume, so we're going to need to solve to get mass by itself. To get mass by itself, we are going to multiply each side by volume. And what that does is it cancels the volume out on this side, leaving mass equaling volume times density. Now we can plug in our numbers. 75 milliliters, leave your units, times 1.2 grams per milliliter. Look at this, the milliliters cancel, grams is left over, grams is an appropriate unit for mass. We're going to enter 75 times 1.2 into our calculator. and we get 90. We get 90 grams. Now look at your sig figs. The first number is 2 because we're still multiplying. Second number is 2. Our final answer has to have 2. We only have 1 at this point, but I can put my zero, my decimal point or I can put a line over my 0 to show my significant digit. So now my answer has 2 significant figures. Okay, here's a um, practice example for you. Go ahead and write this down into your notebook and I want you to try to figure it out. It's asking what the density is from your experiment 
And then this problem goes one step further by giving you the accepted density and asking you to calculate the error in percent error. So we're going back to earlier videos, in fact our first video, and now you're going to apply the equations for error and percent error to show um, how accurate your density experimental value was versus what's accepted. So go ahead and pause the video now, try the problem out, and we will go over it in class tomorrow. I'll see you then.